Hey friends, attorney Kyle Newman here to discuss some of the biggest mistakes injury victims make and how to avoid them. Look, as a New York City medical malpractice and catastrophic injury attorney for well over a decade, I've represented thousands of seriously injured people in court. And I can tell you without question that no case is perfect. And because nobody ever expects to be involved in a life-changing accident, it's easy to be overwhelmed or confused about the things that you either should or should not do after an accident. And looking back at my experiences litigating injury cases here in New York, I put together this list of some of the biggest mistakes that I've seen clients make over the years, which have seriously impacted the value of their cases. So give this video a watch and avoid these mistakes if you were involved in an accident. And oh yeah, since this is YouTube, make sure to slam on that subscribe button and like, comment, and share if this video helps. So because injury cases are civil cases that seek money damages, it's easy to see why some people agree to settle their cases early, which is my number one mistake. So one of the tactics that insurance companies use is to offer an extremely low amount relatively quickly after an accident to settle your claim. This is a big mistake for a bunch of reasons. First off, in my experience, you won't ever know the full extent of your injuries until at least six months after an accident, if not more. And in the context of these injury cases, the majority of treatment is going to be in the first six months to a year after an accident. And often the pain and suffering that you'll see is going to grow to levels you might never have anticipated in the beginning right after your accident. For instance, let's say you were involved in a slip and fall. You fall backwards, slam your head on the ground and suffer what the emergency room doctors diagnosed you with as a minor concussion. But in the context of head injuries, we know that what might be minor in the context of hours or days after an accident can actually develop into a significant traumatic brain injury, which has far more value than just a concussion. Another example, let's say you fractured your ankle on the job. Sometimes ankle fractures don't heal properly. And after being casted, your doctors may take off the cast, take x-rays and say, hey, the bones aren't fusing. You need surgery with metal hardware to repair your ankle. And that surgery that you may not have anticipated during those six weeks that you wore a cast, that is going to significantly increase the value of your case. But you're not going to have the opportunity to get that higher amount if you settle beforehand. And I get it, depending on your circumstance, you may need that money and it may sound like a lot. It might be really enticing. But what you have to remember is that if you agree to an early settlement, you will never be able to recover any damages discovered afterwards. So the best thing to do is to wait until your injuries and your treatment are over or at least close to it. And you have an idea of the challenges that you're going to face going forward. My next mistake is throwing away important evidence to your case. And look, with cell phones and computers, digital evidence doesn't always get thrown out these days. And while I get that people may not anticipate suing and throw stuff out inadvertently, this can actually hurt you big time in the context of a lawsuit. A perfect example of this happens when someone is injured by a defective product. Let's say a defective airbag deployed in a vehicle you were driving, but you need to get back to work. You have kids to drive to school, a house to support, and you need that car back. But if you get your car repaired before having the airbag inspected, you won't have any proof of that defect, which is the physical airbag. Another example of this is let's say you bought baby formula that was recalled because of a bacterial contamination, a type of case that I'm working on right now, and your child gets sick from it. If that formula is destroyed or you throw it in the trash and you have no way of proving your child actually ingested it, that can actually prohibit you from recovering anything from the formula manufacturer. Another example of throwing away vital evidence actually happened to me when my client was involved in a trip and fall on what she claimed was a sheet of ice outside of a business. She testified that at the time she was wearing thick work boots and she was actually asked to maintain them as part of the case. 
Now, later on, the client was moving and she inadvertently threw away the boots, which deprived my adversary from actually seeing and examining them. In that case, the judge determined that there was spoliation of evidence. And when that happens, the judge can actually order at trial that the jury consider that loss of evidence actually adverse to you, negative to you, to the point where they can instruct the jury to presume that that evidence was destroyed because it would have been negative to your case, which is a big deal and a big disadvantage at trial. So there's a huge presumption out there that accident victims tend to overstate their injuries, making them sound worse than they actually are. But in my experience, the actual worst thing that you can do, and this is my third big mistake, is trying to be brave and sucking it up. Basically not getting the medical attention that you need or not telling your doctors how badly hurt you are because essentially you're trying to be a tough guy, which I totally appreciate, but trust me, it's going to hurt you in the end. Look, if you break your ankle, you can't just go to court and say, hey, Mr. Judge, I broke my ankle. I should be entitled to money damages. That's not how it works. The only way that you can prove that you're entitled to money compensation is by showing proof from the hospital records, the x-rays, and actually bringing in medical documentation of your injury, which only happens if you actually go to the doctor and complain to your physician and their staff about your injuries. And this happens a lot with pain. Some people have a tendency to deal with the pain or suck it up, that even if they go to the doctor, they hold back what's really going on in their own body. And this is a huge mistake because the only way that we can actually corroborate what you're claiming is by showing proof in the medical records that, hey, Look at all these visits where our client went to the doctor, they documented significant pain, and they're not gonna be able to do that unless you actually tell them what's going on in your own body. Another example of this is people going back to work way before they should, or against doctor's advice because they think that they can just toughen it out. And look, in the real world, that is totally understandable. But any defense attorney is going to take that and use it against you, making it that much more difficult to prove that you were seriously hurt. Because look, they're gonna come in and say, if you were so badly hurt, then why were you back to work two days after your accident? Or how were you doing heavy lifting on the job if you injured your spine or your shoulder? So look, Bravery is great, but just be careful with it in the legal context because it can hurt you. My next mistake is super important and that is not seeing a doctor after an accident. I sort of touched on this in the bravery example before and I get it, going to physical therapy, going to follow-ups with your doctors, it's exhausting. And at times you may feel like, shit, this isn't going to help me anyway. But what is so important to remember is at trial, jurors who have never met you before, they can't see your pain. They can't step into your shoes unless they see what you've been through in your medical records. By those complaints that are described by doctors, chiropractors, therapists, so that no matter what, go see your doctor. Follow up with them because it's going to help your case. Next on my list is the mistake of representing yourself. Look, the vast majority of people out there know to get a lawyer after they're in an accident. But for some people, for whatever reason, they think that they can do it on their own. Look, personal injury and medical malpractice attorneys like me, this is all that we do. We are professional advocates for the seriously injured, and we only got here because of a ton of hard work and experience for which pro se people have none. And when I see a pro se case come up on the docket, when I'm in court, I truly feel bad for that person because I know that they're going to get slaughtered in court or at trial. They're gonna be abused by the defense attorneys. They're likely going to mess up some critical filing or evidence and they will without question diminish the value of their case. It's a black hole of despair, so just don't do it. Mistake number six on my list is not being honest with your lawyer, and this happens all the time, and even though I find it hard to believe someone could ever lie to this face, it happens, look, and it always ends up badly. So you may think that you're smarter than me or smarter than your attorney, or maybe it's something embarrassing or related to something like a criminal history, but all I could tell you is to be your best advocate. Your lawyer needs to know everything relevant because if we don't 
and get blindsided in court, the only person that's gonna hurt is you. Plus, because of the attorney-client privilege, we can't disclose any information you tell us anyway, so you can feel safe telling us the important stuff. Plus, we can actually plan it, which when it comes to trial practice, planning is the single most important thing that you could do to be successful in court. And for my last mistake, mistake number seven, it's probably the biggest one and the single biggest way to kill your case and that is posting too much crap on social media. And just so you know, when we start a case, one of the first things that I tell my clients is to watch your social. Because every defense attorney, once that complaint is filed, is going to request access to look at your social media, looking for anything that's gonna hurt your case. For instance, if you hurt your knee, posting pictures of you jumping on a trampoline a week after the accident, that's gonna hurt you or claiming that you're disabled from work but posting a luxurious beachside vacation, that's gonna hurt you. So be aware of this, protect yourself until at least your case is settled. All right, this is Kyle Newman. I hope you can see how important these mistakes are because I've lived through them and I know how critical they are for your chances to win your case. And look, if you found any of this helpful, I would love for you to subscribe to our channel so I can keep putting out this useful information for accident victims here in New York and across the country. Something I absolutely love to do. All right, stay safe out there. I will catch you next time.